Happy Veterans Day to my friends to the South. Happy Remembrance Day. I, I don't even know if happy's the the proper way to, to say it. A solemn Remembrance Day. And to any veterans watching this, of course, thank you all very much for your service. If there is one group of individuals that have my utmost respect, it is the armed forces because they sign up, they get deployed to just some of the most hellacious landscapes on Earth, and they don't get nearly the, the best treatment that they should be getting for laying their life on the line and sometimes making the ultimate sacrifice in order to keep, well, our unfortunately cratering countries in the best shape that um, at least that they were designed to operate under. So uh, you, have my you have my sincerest thanks on this. Very important day that is often taken for granted as just being a random holiday in November and the last one in Canada and before the the not holidays the generic holidays but we'll go ahead and continue to name every other non-christian holiday anyways but that's not the that's not central to this okay yeah moment of silence so um at Ottawa they would have had their their big wreath laying ceremony and you'd think it's the one time of year that you actually have to pay lip service to the fucking military you cunts in the liberal party moment of silence interrupted oh mm, i didn't think anything could get me as upset as the first video of the day but uh this this gets pretty close interrupted by the announcement of the governor general's arrival trudeau just managed to avoid being late for the moment of silence arriving mere minutes before 11 o'clock a.m like he had anywhere else to be but he also doesn't give a fuck about tradition or anybody else or or even just the concept of self-sacrifice the fucking glorified weasel during a remembrance day event held today in ottawa uh, the moment of silence was broken to introduce canada's governor general i can't fucking believe this in the middle of the two minute moment of silence governor general mary simon arrived in her protect in her protective convoy the announcement was made at the end oh i'm sorry the announcer at the end made sure the crowd was aware of her arrival saying ladies and gentlemen arriving now is her excellency the right honorable nothing honorable about showing up late uh, Mary Simon, the Governor General, in a taxpayer funded motorcade. On top of this, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau just managed to avoid being late for the moment of silence, arriving mere minutes after, or mere minutes before 11 a.m. This time, the moment of silence is usually observed. Has been for as long as I can remember, and hopefully will be for as long as I'm around. Toronto Sun propagandist Brian Pasumi said it was an unfortunate distraction to an otherwise solemn and fantastic ceremony. Yeah, the Governor General and the Prime Minister of Canada is showing up quite late because what, um, the 1030 pegging ran late? Was it necessary to herald the arriving, er, the arrival during the two minutes of silence? Uh, they couldn't just let her arrive and slip in unannounced and maybe announce it later. The former director of policy to Prime Minister Stephen Harper said that uh, the disrespect is staggering. No shit. Unbelievable. However, the rest of the program participants did a beautiful job of a very abbreviated ceremony. Of course, probably because of... of Oh, my pandemic that they'll never let end and probably was just out there to espouse the wonders of the vaccine passport in this fucked country. A former CFL Grey Cup winner also commented on the interrupted on the interruption, sorry, saying it was shameful, but not surprising. Of course, they don't give a fuck about anybody else except for themselves. Let's talk about some Veterans Day um, ceremonial blunders by Joe Biden. We're going to talk about, uh, this is just kind of a hodgepodge of events on the day because the Kyle Rittenhouse stuff did take up a big chunk of it and pretty much has dominated the headlines over at least the past couple of days because um, media and the elites are sick motherfuckers. Joe Biden refers to baseball player with outdated racist term. Yeah, not even like anybody that you would um, really as associate with being a popular, notable, um, a referential, worthy. Uh, he was a great player, but this was like during an era long gone. Okay, but also during Joe Biden's midlife crisis. So I guess he had a, a certain affinity for the player. During Thursday's Veteran Day ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery, or Cemetery, sorry, I don't know, picking out his plot for the next six months, Biden referred to baseball player, or baseball legend Satchel Paige using an outdated racist term. 
Wow, Joe Biden, Joe Biden being racist. What is it? A day that ends in Y? I can hardly believe it. No, it was just the stutter and uh, yeah, all of those uh, left wing fucking nut jobs who were out there saying that Kyle Rittenhouse was putting on a show would also be saying, oh, he just slept, Joe Biden just slipped up and he's not racist and he's a good man and he didn't do anything wrong ever. Thank you for your service to our country. I just want to tell you, I know uh, you're a little younger than I am, as he said to all the dead in the cemetery. But you know, I've adopted the attitude of the great Negro at a time. He's not racist. A uh, pitcher in the Negro Leagues uh, went on to become a great pitcher in the pros and Major League Baseball after Jackie Robinson. His name was Satchel Paige, and Satchel Paige, on his 47th birthday, pitched a win against Chicago. Biden continued, and all the press went in and said, Satch, it's amazing, 47 years old. Put another 47 in front of you, you could run on the Democratic ticket one day. Probably still can in some districts. Uh, no one ever pitched uh, a win at age 47. How do you feel about being 47? You can tell with dementia patients, their mind gets kind of caught up on one specific piece of information and keeps repeating it ad nauseum as a way to just kind of hold on to something firm that they know for certain. Just a, just a little parallel fact for everyone. He said, boys, that's not how I look at it. This is how you look at it. Really saying a lot without saying very much. Satch said, so they're looking at, oh, at it this way. How old would you be if you don't know how old you were? I'm 50 years old and the ambassador's 47. Long and short of it, he called Satchel Page somebody who's been dead for decades a Negro. Good for him. But some good news on the day because I didn't want to end this all with a just absolute fucking disaster. A January 6th uh, committee, um, if you haven't already known that it's, total fucking bunk. The appeals court just kind of nuked it from orbit. Appeals court blocks uh, House a January 6th panel from accessing Trump's White House records. Oh, the racist appeals court? Okay. Federal appeals court on Thursday halted the scheduled transfer of records of President Donald Trump's time in office from the National Archives to Congress, ruling that Congress cannot access the files for now. The three-judge panel from the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District uh, of oh, the District of Columbia Circuit ru overruled a federal judge. So this is the appeals court from D.C., a place that votes Democratic at like a 94% clip. Just need to clarify that one for a second. I opined earlier this week that the House of Representatives panel investigation, uh, the January 6th, uh, the U.S. Capitol had a legitimate legislative purpose in seeking the records. Cool. Uh, U.S. District Judge Tanya Chikutin, a Obama nominee, how racist, uh, said the transfer could proceed as planned on Friday. Trump appealed. Jesse Binnell, a Trump lawyer, said the former president is likely to prevail as he tried to convince a higher court to enter an injunction against Chikutin's order. The alleged legis legislative purpose underpinning uh, the overbroad request uh, at issue here clearly does not merit involving the president and his records, Binnell said. Uh, the committee had failed to identify anything in the broad swath of materials requested that would inform proposed legislation. The panel agreed to stop the transfer pending a further order from the court. The court will hear the case in the coming days before making a more permanent ruling. Yeah, but it already sucks to suck because you're not going to get those records. Aha. Uh -huh. Trump's team was ordered to file a brief by November 16th at noon. Totally beat that. The brief due from the House panel six days later. Trump's team can now respond in a second filing due by November 24th at noon. Oral arguments is slated, slated to take place on November 30th. The panel consisted of Judges Patricia Millett, an Obama, appoint, er, an Obama nominee, Robert Wilkins, an Obama nominee, and Kajanti Brown-Jackson, a Biden nominee. Cool. Benny Thompson's probably too butthurt to respond for comment on that one. So, you got Justin Trudeau showing up late, Biden just dropping an end bomb of sorts. At least he kept it a little bit above board today. And Trump getting a win. It's nice that the guy who actually respects the military receives a victory on Veterans Day. Chuck that one up for the good guys, I guess. But with that said, everyone, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.